so after all that we've got a, a piece of Osage that's got one yearly growth ring exposed along the entire back. Uh, now we can start laying out the bow. Now this piece of wood is it's probably seven feet long so it's quite a bit longer than we need so we've got a lot of room to play uh, back and forth and what I mean by that is you know if we've got a piece uh, that's um, like uh, long like this we can and we're only going to take a 65 or 67 inch bow out of it we can move it you know one way or another so that it lays out on this piece of wood uh, say if we've got a, a knot like this that's going to be right in the middle of the working part of the limb this knot's gonna, not going to cause any trouble um, but if we did have one that was going to cause some trouble we could possibly avoid that knot by moving the bow down or up um, getting this closer towards the uh, what would be the riser part or towards the limb tip that doesn't work so much. Um, so a lot of different options. So the first thing I'm going to do is this bow is going to be 67 inches long. I'm going to take a tape measure and hook it here. Just measure 67 uh, inches and make a mark. Divide that in half. Make another mark so that you'll know where the center is. Um, and then we can go from there. Now before we start to lay out the back of the bow, I just want to take the draw knife and kind of clean up this rough edge here uh, because we're going to be running our fingers along the edge here uh, to draw a line on the back uh, and a smooth surface here really helps to get a, to get a smooth line and plus it keeps the splinters out of your fingers. Uh, so just take your draw knife, lay your, uh, lay your stave on edge and make sure you pad uh, the, the, the back of the bow here or what's going to be the back of the bow. Uh, you don't want to clamp that in your vise uh, and scar up that ring that's going to be the back. Alright, so after we've got the, uh, the sides smoothed up, everything's taken care of on the backs down to one ring, uh, everything looks good, um, I want to just take a pencil and kind of just follow the grain, follow the, the sweep of the piece of wood, Wherever the curves go, uh, your fingers need to go. But you can uh, use your fingers kind of as a gauge uh, and come over towards the center of the stave here. And we're going to draw just a rough line of right down uh, the middle of this stave. Uh, and then we're going to use that line to help lay out the bow. So just kind of get your fingers right here and get them in a position that you can hold uh, over the entire... Uh, uh, scribing the entire back of the piece of wood. So kind of line up right in the middle and just right kind of scribe a line right down the center and just follow the un, uh, undulations and uh, keep it centered up. You know if, uh, if you get off a little bit here and there it doesn't really matter. This is just a rough line. Uh, it's you know this doesn't have to be perfect so so there we have it we've got a line right down the center of the stave we're going to use this line uh, each side and measure off each side of it so that we can get our taper correct all the way down to the knock ends alright so after I've got the line scribed down the center I'm going to go ahead and move to my handle section and lay it out so the way I like to lay out my handles is uh, I've got the center or the uh, the middle of the stave marked right here uh, and then of course the, uh, the the center line is scribed here I like to measure up about an inch uh, towards the top limb make a little mark there and then measure down three inches so one two three make another mark there so your handle section is going to go right right in here uh, your arrow shelf is going to be up here uh, if you cut one in and then your fades are going to come out from here so I'm going to go ahead and draw my uh, arrow shelf on here and I like my bows to be fairly close to center shot uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take this center line here and use that as the farthest point in for my arrow shelf so I'll go ahead and draw a little line over there come down uh, and this is going to be the handle section and then I'll come up and kind of you know this all these lines that we're drawing on here are just um, rough estimates. All this stuff's going to change. Uh, just kind of serves to give us a guide um, so that we have something to go go on. So I'm going to come on this side, 
kind of draw my handle down this way. Come up here with the handle. Now, uh, this line here isn't perfectly lined up right in the center of this piece of stave, but the bow's not going to be anywhere near this wide, so we've got a lot of room to play back and forth here. So, that's kind of going to be the general layout of, uh, of the handle, the arrow shelf, uh, and then the fades are going to come out from here, like I said. Okay, so Osage tends to perform best, for me anyway, in a flat bow design, which is fairly wide and fairly uh, thin uh, uh, limb cross-section. So I like mine to be about an inch and three quarters or so at the widest point. Um, you know, you can make them in a long bow design if you want to, uh, but personally I like to lay them out like this. So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, on the center line, lay my tape measure or calipers if you've got some on there and I'm going to uh, measure off each side uh, so that the the wide part of the limb is going to be um, about one and three quarters inches. So I'm going to make a mark here and make another mark there. So that's going to be you know about as wide as my bow is going to be. Now I like to hold this uh, inch and three quarter width on out pretty good ways out the limb and I'll, I'll keep it about that wide until I get out to about the last uh, third or so of the limb before I start uh, really tapering it in to the knock point. So just come along here about every, I don't know, four, five, six, eight inches or so, make you another, another set of marks and then we're just gonna connect all the dots. And that'll be the uh, the profile of our bow. Okay, so we've got all our marks along the edge, uh, you know, on each side of the center line here. Now, we're, just like we did the uh, center line, we're going to go ahead and scribe these edge lines. Now, the way this one lays out is it's pretty uniform uh, gap between the what's going to be the edge of the limb and the edge of the piece of wood. So we can just lay the pencil on there and kind of just follow the edge of the wood. Now down here towards the end, this gap uh, between here and here starts to get a little bit wider. So we're going to have to increase this, uh, this gap here just a little bit to, to follow these uh, marks in on the piece of wood. So uh, I just kind of eyeball it, you know, if, uh, if you're a little bit more uh, exacting than I am, you can use some calipers and uh, get a little bit more perfect but like I said this is just a um, uh, you know this is a rough line uh, it's gonna change um, this is just something to give us a guide so you know it doesn't have to be perfect Alright, so we've got both edge, uh, both lines on the edges drawn out here, and we've got to the last about a third or so of the, uh, the towards the limb tips, and this is where our fades are going to start coming in. Now, uh, me, I just kind of approximate things. I just draw a straight line from the edge of the what's going to be the edge of the knock, uh, and connect it to my line here. Uh, now, the finished bow isn't going to be straight across here. It's going to kind of flare out and then come back in, um, but you know, I just kind of find a straight edge laying around somewhere. I got a piece of old arrow shaft here, and I just draw a straight line. Um, like I said, this is gonna be this is an approximation. It uh, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, it's gonna change. So I just kind of approximate it. Like I said before, if you've got some calipers, you know, you can um, you can use those. They really come in handy. Uh, and you can get a lot more uh, exact on your line here but you know as long as we've got a guide uh, something that's going to keep us from taking in uh, taking the wood in too far uh, we're good to go so before we do anything else I'm just going to go ahead and lock this end off because we don't need it uh, it's just going to get in the way So 
start taking the sides in right here uh, and cutting out the profile of this bow, I want to go ahead and, uh, and take some of this excess stuff off back here. This piece of wood is really deep. Uh, it's kind of cumbersome to work with when it's this big. So I'm going to go ahead and just split the back side of this off of here. Now, um, when you do this, oftentimes you can take this back piece and make another bow out of it. Um, sometimes when your piece of wood is a wedge shape like this, uh, when you start splitting off this back here, um, it's not really wide enough to make a full size bow, but there's definitely uh, probably a kid's bow back here somewhere. So you want to, you don't want to take off too much. You, uh, you want to leave plenty of wood so that your bow is deep enough back here uh, for the deepest part or the thickest part of your handle. So uh, I like a kind of a fairly small handle, so I don't need a lot of wood. Um, but just remember, don't take off too much because it's, uh, you can't put it back on. Um, but I need mine to be about, oh, I don't know, two and a half inches or so deep. Uh, so I'll just come in here, put my draw knife up here, get about two and a half inches or so, and, you know, leave plenty of wood because, like I said, you can't put it back on. Um, and this is just a time-saving step. You don't have to do this, um, but I'll go ahead and put my draw knife up there. And it, sometimes it helps if you get it one, on one of those early wood rings. Just give it a tap like that. You'll open up a little crack. Then you can take your draw knife and just give it a little twist. And you can pop that back off there. Just like that. Now they don't all split like this one. This one was uh, really good actually and it, and it split right along a ring. So for this piece now all I've got to do is clean up this ring and I've got another bow ready to go. So now we've got a piece of wood that's a lot, uh, a lot easier to maneuver, a lot easier to work with. So now we'll go ahead and put it in our vise and we'll start taking uh, the edges down to these lines or almost to these lines um, and cut out the profile of the bow. So put your wood back in there. Remember to pad it. These lines are just approximations. Uh, you're going to use the grain of the wood uh, to dictate where the edges of your bow is going to be. So, you know, if your line's in one place and the, and the grain doesn't want to go there, don't worry about it. Just, uh, uh, you know, ignore the line, go with the grain, draw a new line if it helps you. But uh, just because your line is going a certain place doesn't mean that uh, that's where the edge of your bow needs to be. And a good example is where you come over a knot and you'll, a lot of times uh, when you're drawing the, uh, the profile of the bow on here, you'll cut a knot right in half or you'll bisect a knot with your line. Uh, you don't want to follow that line with your draw knife because uh, uh, you're going to be exposing uh, the, the edge grain uh, right in the middle of those knots. So um, when you're coming along this line with your draw knife, you just want to follow the grain around, uh, around that knot and leave all that grain intact. And again, at this point, uh, a, a fairly dull draw knife really helps. It helps me uh, so that I'm not cutting through the grain because uh, if your draw knife is not real sharp, it tends to follow the grain and follow all these dips uh, a lot better than uh, if it was real sharp. If it was, uh, if it was a sharp draw knife, you'd just be cutting through it.
So here's a pretty good example of where my line kind of bisects a knot. Um, just going to take my draw knife and, and come along here and follow the green. And it, uh, it should, right here at this knot, it should come up and then dip back down a little bit. Okay, so I've got the profile pretty much cut out, everything um, except for the, the handle here and the limb tips, which we'll get later. Uh, now I'm just going to take the piece of wood, lay it on its side, and uh, draw the side profile on there so that we can start taking wood off the belly side of the stave. And same type of deal, you just take your pencil uh, and scribe a line right along the edge. Uh, I like mine to be uh, about a half inch. Now the limb's going to be a lot thinner than that, but um, uh, we're just going to use this line as a uh, a gauge just like we did the other one um, and uh, so that we can take off the the bulk of this wood right here we, we can take this off with a, a hatchet or a machete or or you know whatever we have um, uh, just to get it off there quick and that's the this line is basically just to give you a reference so that you don't go too deep half inch or so for a flat bow ought to give you plenty of uh, plenty of wood to play with once you take it down to this line. Now my handle section is right in here um, so I'm going to come to the bottom of my handle right here and just kind of draw my draw some fades right up into a handle section which is going to be all of this. So your handle is going to be right here. All this stuff right here and all this is going to come off. Okay so I've got my uh, my side profiles drawn on here. I've got uh, kind of the rough lines where my handle is going to be right in here. Uh, I've got it drawn on both sides. Now I'm just going to clamp this piece of wood back in the vise and start taking some of this, uh, the bulk of this wood on the belly side here off. Like I said before, uh, you can have, you can use a hatchet or a machete here, uh, but I've got uh, the only tool I've got handy is a draw knife, so I'm going to use that. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the limb tips and get those cleaned up and then we'll be done with roughing the bow out. Alright, so as you can see this string that we've got on here is stretched from knock to knock and it's off to this side of the the stave here so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and steam this handle section and bend that this way which will bring the knock tips this way and line everything up alright so while we're waiting for our water to heat up I just want to show you what I've set up here 
Now, if I was trying to bend a straight piece of wood and I wanted to bend it uh, down like this, I could just take two pieces of, two blocks of wood like this, take a C-clamp, put it in here, and go ahead and just bend it down. But since this piece of wood has got some back set, if I try to do it like this, it's going to want to try and roll on me when I, when I put some pressure right here, just like that right there. So what I've done is I've made a couple of blocks with some slots in them. And I'm going to go ahead and put my limb tips right, or my, uh, the limbs right in there. So now, when I, so these slots hold the limb from rocking back and forth. So now when I put pressure here, it holds everything in place. So before you get everything steamed and ready to bend, you want to take a few minutes to get everything set up so that you know it's going to work right when you've got your hot wood ready to bend. Uh, so what I do is go ahead and put the wood uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the jig just like you're going to do it when you bend it uh, and put your clamp on there and go ahead and give it a few bends because sometimes, uh, you know, even with these blocks, things like to twist and pop out and it's very frustrating when you've you know, spent half an hour steaming a piece of wood and you've got it ready to bend and your jig falls apart. So just take a few minutes and, and get it just the way you want it so everything's ready to go when it comes off the steam. Now what I've done is I've taken this line again and put it on the edge of the, uh, the knock points on both edges. So because I've got these blocks here, I can't, I can't put this line right on the center line. Uh, so I'm having to bring it up to clear these blocks. Now, uh, what I can do is just it's uh, take a look at it. It's about a quarter inch above this center line here on this knock tip. It's the same down here. So all I've got to do is back up and look here and look face on at the bow. And it's when I've got it bent down it's about a quarter inch above right here so I know everything's lined up and this is where the bow needs to be it actually needs to be bent a little bit further than this because uh, it'll try and spring back a little bit um, so what I've done is I've taken a couple of washers and put right here uh, so that I know when I'm twisting it down once I get to those washers that's as far as I need to go I don't have to worry with the string anymore So you, I just put my piece of wood over this pot, um, cover it with a piece of tin foil, and set the timer for about half an hour. Uh, the length of time you need to steam the wood depends on how thick it is. This is a fairly thick piece of wood, um, so a half an hour should do it. Uh, if it's thinner, um, maybe 10 minutes, like if you're steaming recurves into a limb tip, it doesn't take very long to heat that wood up. So we just bend it down until it hits our, uh, our little spacer here. Now we know that uh, the limb tips are just a little bit above the center line here because that's where we set our spacer to. And now we'll just sit, um, let it sit here and cool off. Um, and then it should stay bent. Alright, so <clears throat> everything's cooled off now. We'll go ahead and just take it out of this jig and see how it turned out. Now at this point I'm just going to take this line and put it right on the center line or right on the middle of the two knock points. Just make sure everything lines up right down the center. That looks pretty good right there.
right, so now we're ready to get started on the floor tailoring.